Okay, Dad, today is Friday, May 24th, and I was thinking we could start this off by talking a little bit about the ICC ruling um, and see if there's any updates there. Um, and just sort of, I've been thinking a little bit about some of the implications I want to ask you about. But first, can you tell us, okay. is there anything new to update? Um, no, I think we got, you know, more of the same. We we continue to uh, teeter on the edge of, you know, the precipice. Uh, so there's been no official actual Oh, okay. You're talking about the ICC in, in, right. yeah, in particular. Um, no, I don't think there. He, he made the, uh, it was uh, Karim Khan, you know, made the request um, to the court. You know, he's the prosecutor, but he, he put this before the justices of the court to issue a warrant for the rest of, you know, of Netanyahu, Gallant, and then the three Hamas leaders. The And hey, they haven't you know, made a decision yet. Uh, so we'll see what happens. In the meantime, of course, uh, there there was a great uproar or following that uh, bit of news, there was a tremendous uproar, a predictable uproar in um, in the U.S. media and the in the Congress and all kinds of threats. And, um, you know, bills are being considered to to sanction the ICC and, you know, to everybody that's associated with them. Mm. Um I, right. think, I think that was again entirely predictable. Um, you know, one I think an interesting piece of information that came from uh, Alistair Crook is that uh, one of the three Hamas officials that were named is actually the lead negotiator for Hamas. So that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know if he, you know, if Khan even understood that, because again, you know. It, it may make it impossible for him to con continue to conduct negotiations. He's been going back and forth between um, uh, my, uh, Cairo and I think uh, Doha. Cutter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. How long does it normally take for something like this? You know, it was big news when we heard, and I was right. thinking, is this going to happen right away? And um, yeah, you know, actually, I haven't heard any discussion of that. I think fairly soon. I mean, it's not going to be months from now, you know, days or weeks, days or, or a week or two, maybe. If, that's, the that's IC, my... if the ICC and the ICJ both rule against Israel, the ICJ says that, you know, this is a genocide and the ICC puts out an arrest warrant for Netanyahu and Gallant, what will this mean for the other countries? What will it mean for the United States? Could it be possible right. that people like Biden and U.S. officials would then be uh, have warrants out for them or sanctioned yeah. um, because that is complicity in genocide, right? right. If these international courts that right. we back and we say we support the, you know, the rule of law, international, uh -huh. uh, you know, order, um, w w what would happen? Is it possible? Yeah. Well, it certainly is. I mean, now the ICC uh, actually did not use the word genocide. In mm -hmm. you know, in its or, you know, in the prosecutor's request, I mean, the, the crimes that he listed were were major crimes. I mean, we're talking about deliberate starvation and you know, and uh, you know, inf inflicting you know um, deliberate harm, including you know, murder on a civilian population. So you know, they're very very serious crimes that that um, that are. <laughs> Being directed at the the Israeli leadership, um, but he did not actually use you know the term genocide. Mm. Um, you know, of course, the ICJ is looking at you know finds that are plausible grounds for uh, you know a determination of genocide. Uh, yeah, I'm just but, wondering, yeah, but it's true. I mean, what what you say is true that if if this uh, warrant is issued, you know, then clearly um, those people that are supporting. And, and and actually, you know, the number one person is Biden. I mean, that's really the, the U.S. more than any other country in the world is supporting you, um, Israel in in um, its war and in in, in 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 Gaza. Um, you know, both on many levels. You know, through mili by the direct supply of military equipment, uh, economic aid, diplomatic cover. You know, just all around. You know, clearly they're making it possible. Um, more than any other country in the world. And the second country you probably would have to point to is Germany. So, and, and Germany, interestingly, has said that they would respect the warrants 
that if yeah, you know, I saw Netanyahu, that. right. If Netanyahu shows up on their soil after the, the warrant is issued, they would arrest him. Right. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, seems... it's a serious matter, um, and it could. It, you know, there's a possibility. Again, you know, I think you just it just may be. I, I don't think they'll take that step, not because there isn't some sort of legal grounds to do it, but it's the United States, and they don't want to, you know, provoke. Uh, a backlash, you know, they don't want them, <laughs> the U.S. The U.S. bombing the Hague or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, you know that wouldn't happen. But the U.S. does have a lot of ways to make uh, make your life miserable and to, you know, to um, <clears throat> make the work of the ICC its future doubtful. Did you think that the uh, the ICC will will bend and cave under U.S. pressure, you know, with these sanctions and these threats? Do you think that? If they do, it also seems very obvious. This is right. a kind that's of a very mafiasque type of Ex move. You exactly. Know? I think that's the problem is that it would be so obvious. It would just be clearly the end of the ICC. I mean, it would. It, I think its reputation was already tattered, um, but that would just be the end of it. And you know, even even more so than if, let's say, Khan had failed to to um, to make this request for the for the warrants. Uh, because mm -hmm. he's taken a step, it's public, and then also the U.S. has publicly threatened them. And then if they back down, then everybody can see what's going on. You know, this is taking place in public. It's not just a theory about, okay, yeah, I think they were pressured behind the scenes, but, you know, they're being published, pressured out in the open. And then they would do something that would be very unusual not to, uh, you know, not to... Um, meet his request and issue the warrants. Everybody, I, I think nobody could pretend otherwise. It clear, clearly would be a case of the ICC bending to the will of the United States, and that would be just the end of any legitimacy that it still has. So then you think the ICC won't do that then? And this is make the I, U... I think they will mm -hmm. issue the warrants, yeah. So they will, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you think they right. will issue the warrants? This is going to make the U.S. look really bad, and then the U.S. Yeah. is going to freak out. They're already freaking out, just like right. you said. You know, Israel's been putting on all the screws in, in the U.S. media. I just turned on the the news yesterday, flipping through. I saw Netanyahu on on Hannity yesterday on Fox News, and it was just just awful. You know, just <laughs> just the, the 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 how he twists it, and and something that I heard Aaron Mate say um, was saying that how. Basically, the, the all the state of Israel just you know flipped the switch on the Israel lobby and basically sent out a message to all of our oh, politicians right. and all of our congressmen to say talk about the moral equivalence between there is yeah. no moral equivalence right. between the absurdity you know, of, right 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 and, yeah, and, and so it's almost use the same language they're it's reading crazy. From the same yeah. script right so if you just go on Twitter on X and you type in equivalence or moral moral equivalence. You can see all of our representatives or congressmen are using the exact same terminology. Yeah, it's right. it's like they got the the post-it you know from APAC yeah. Yeah. and said well, this is what you have to say. Right, that's that's basically what happened. Yeah, but it's yeah. I, it, isn't it becoming more and more apparent to people that like, yeah. hey, who runs our government? It's right. it's it's APAC, it's Israel. Right. You know, something yeah. happens and all of a sudden they flip the switch. Everyone's right. adopted the same narrative. Um, I don't know. It's it's gross. It, right. it doesn't seem like right. Israel has the same type of influence in Europe, though. Like you said, Germany yeah. said they would respect the warrant. Right. So I feel like Europe right. is getting a little, getting a little icky with this whole thing, and I think uh -huh. they kind of want to back away. But the U.S. Right. is just going to double down. Yeah. Which just means it's right. going well, to further isolate yeah. us. Right. I think that's actually. I mean, part of, a good part of the reason that the ICC, um, or why Khan, you know, reached this decision, is just that. Um, yeah, there is a split within Europe. You know, clearly the old establishment is very Zionist. You know, especially in certain countries like like Germany and, and you know, in Britain, they're they're very. But you notice, for example, when the um, but they're but maybe you know the younger part of the establishment. You know, the establishment in some countries like Spain, Ireland, and whatever are really are not uh, it's under the control of the Zionists. Uh, you know, the way they are in England or in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, there is an opposition. There is a split within the establishment in Europe. And so I think that's why, you know, Khan had some space in which to actually make this decision.
it was obviously it obviously displeased a lot of governments in Europe, um, but it didn't displease all of them, and it didn't and it certainly didn't displease you know certain influential groups you know within different European governments. Again, you can see the um, the difference you know when these UN votes take place. For example, in the the Security Council, you you have the one the most recent one um, on Palestinian statehood or or actually. Uh, accepting Palestine as a member of of the UN, uh, the U the US was the sole you know nay vote, and I think Britain um, abstained, but France, for example, voted for it. So there isn't mm -hmm. the same you know degree of control or Zionist control of European governments as there is in the US, and again that's why we could this this decision by Khan was possible. Do you think this will start to drive a wedge between the U.S. and Western Europe? You know, if, you know, if countries like, like you said, Germany is one of the most so biggest supporters of Israel. They give a lot of money to it. They have the guilt from the Holocaust that they've been running on forever. Uh, but even they are saying, you know, what we, are, we will respect the, the ICC ruling, you know, the arrest right. warrant. And They're if kind Netanyahu of, flies yeah. to Germany, right. you know, you yeah. get arrested. Right. No, no, it's true. I mean, at the same time, they continue to support Israel um, and they've re actually been really cracking down in a re very authoritarian way on uh, pro-Palestinian demonstrations in Germany. Um, but I, th I think they're aware of, you know, kind of like what the drift is and they know that it's not good for Israel. I mean, anybody who's looking at this, um, it's just and increasingly the U.S. is looking isolated. You know, we have. The crazy Zionists, you know, are concentrated in two countries in the world, and they are Israel and the U.S. Um, and most of the world can see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I wonder, you know, if these warrants get issued, I, I wonder if we'll start to see countries start to be afraid of their connection with Israel because it's just becoming tainted. It's like a, yeah, you know, a poisoned pool, and we were all drinking from it, and. You know, people need to realize that they need to cut ties with it or or they might be in trouble, you know, sending arms, sending right. aid. Um, is that starting to happen now? Are we seeing I there was a few things I thought saw like Norway was not going to send stuff or are, are we starting to see a, a, a trend to. Right. Yeah, there are a couple of countries that have declared, you know, no more arms to Israel within Europe. Yeah, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, you know, of course, what was it recently? Norway, Spain, and Ireland, um, you know, recognized the state of Palestine. Mm -hmm. They did that with all kinds of, you know, uh, of apologies and so forth. But but uh, but that didn't prevent the Israeli government from calling them anti-Semites and you know and and calling in their ambassadors and giving you know dressing them down. And yeah, it's. I I think you know I think you know it's the trend is not good for Israel. I mean, it's like it, this has been very damaging uh, to to Israel. Um, Israel was in so much better shape before October seventh. You know, <laughs> it's mm. not the actual damage that Hamas, of course, did to them on that day, but it's their their just obscene, disproportionate reaction to it has opened the eyes of a lot of people. Has shocked a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, kind of assumed that yeah, Israel was uh, is one of the civilized nations, and uh, you know, and and, and the Palestinian problem seemed to have died away, and now it's it's just it's come back and just uh, you know in a form that I think yeah you know, nobody could predict. I mean, it's just it's um, you know I, I haven't seen any opinion opinion polls on like for example in Europe on how people view Israel, but I'm sure there's been a dramatic decline in support and yeah and and very. An increased sentiment, and of course, in support of the Palestinians, very marked. You know, probably, you know, where you didn't see much of a change for decades. I, I, I think we, you know, we saw more change in favor of Palestine and against Israel in these last several months than we've seen in decades. It'll be interesting yeah, they, when they, we actually get the polls. But... Right, Israel really misplayed its hand. You know, when October seventh mm -hmm. happened, global sympathy was on the side of Israel. You right. Know, everybody was thinking like, oh, my God, this is awful. What Hamas right. did, yeah. you know, they're just they're, they're monsters. And then very quickly, you know, just the, the rhetoric and then the actions of the Israeli government were just so over the top, you know, talking about you got to slaughter the babies. You got to kill them all. Yeah. You know, invoking yeah. Amalek just on tape, you know, right. and right. Anyway, right. Yeah. they just they really messed up. Really. Right. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. And they continue to do it. That's the thing is they just don't seem to have any awareness. They don't give a damn. And um, mm-hmm. and the one country in the world where they're, um, you know, where they, where they that, that continues, where their support, I think, is still fair to say is rock solid is the U.S., though there are some cracks in that rock, as we've discussed, you know, that they're mm-hmm. even, you know, if you look at the long term, it doesn't look good because of the way young people view Israel. But the older generation, you know, people like 40 and above are still almost entirely, you know, pro-Israeli. Um, but 20 years from now, if the, these trends continue and Israel is still there, you know, who knows? <laughs> they, they, they're they just not going to have the support. They, they've kind of lit a fuse, I think, even in the U.S., that's right. going to blow up here sometime, you know, maybe, maybe sooner than the 20 years. And it could, because of the way right. they're going, it may be even the over forties and the, the boomers like myself will wake up to what's happening. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I think would be cool if we could dive into would be talking about what type of government really exists in Israel, because we're always hearing that Israel is a democracy and Israel is this shining beacon of good and, and light and they're fighting this battle of evil um, and we need to support the only democracy in the Middle East. Right. Um, I think that's a very superficial and accurate description of what Israel is. You know, well, we've both been to Israel. We've both been to the West Bank. Right. Um, I was pretty young when I was there, but I, I remember just a few things. For example, there's always these little, these, uh, you know, it's an apartheid state, clearly. If you're an Arab, you are a second class citizen. Um, one thing I remember is that, uh, you know, Arabs uh, don't serve in the IDF. And if you're not in the IDF, you, if you don't serve in the military, you're denied all kinds of rights and privileges. So, right there is right. just a big example of like, it's not really a democracy. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so, I mean, you could say, um, you know, for Arab citizens of Israel, um, you know, the, what are approximately 20% of the population, uh, they are second class citizens, you know, for you, you name some of the reasons there. And I think it also, there are other restrictions like it comes, coming to, when it comes to the purchase of uh, real estate and so forth, you know, they don't have the same rights as other is, Israelis do. And then, um, but it's that's not the worst of it you know is mm-hmm. the, the they still are citizens and they have a fair number of rights uh, but it's those people in the west bank and the gaza the, the fact that you know they're under occupation occupation have been under occupation you know um since 1967 um so we're talking about how approximately 55 years they clearly are you know second class citizens they're almost like you know again they're almost like prisoners um, and they're treated like that as, you know, inmates in an, in an open air prison. Um, that's the real horror. And it's, it's not, you know, it's not just that their freedoms re- are restricted, but they're constantly, um, you know, killings continue year after year. You know, people have, have ignored it because all the focus is on Gaza. But since October 7th, there what, 500 Palestinians on the West Bank have been killed and thousands have been rounded up. Um, and, you know, without charges. And this is a, you know, it's intensified recently, but this has just been an ongoing constant thing for years and decades. You know, these people are not just, it's not just that they don't have the full range of rights, you know, but they they really don't have any rights. It's just when the Israelis decide to, to take their property, you know, to cut down their trees, you know, to to detain their sons or there's just nothing they can do and they can you know grab somebody hold them for years and release them you know without charges or kill them you know and then there's just no redress Uh, occasionally there's something that's so egregious that it you know draws some international attention an idf soldier gets killed not killed but rather is um you know maybe is charged and then and then everybody you know these the Israel lobby back here, you know, are, say, well, look, you know, what this Israel is a nation of laws, you know, they, the Arabs would never do this. And then, you know, maybe a few months later when nobody's paying any attention, this person who killed, let's say, a Palestinian child, he's just released from prison and and it goes on. You know, this this is mm-hmm. what what they've been living under for a long, long time. This is so it's, it's entirely fair to say it's an apartheid state. And I um, it's actually, it's probably a little bit generous, you know, that South Africans have gone to Israel and say, oh, this is worse than what we dealt with. You know, yeah, we were mm-hmm. second class citizens, um, but there wasn't an effort to, you know, to, you know, to just, we, we, we experienced nothing like this. 
Right. Well, I mean, what, what's happening? Gaza is a straight up open air prison. Um, that that's I that's think the West, West Bank is becoming is becoming one too. You know, it really. I, I, I was going to say, and and the West Bank as well. But I'm talking about even within Israel proper. They will say like right. Israel proper. You know, Tel Aviv and right. Haifa. You right. know, these are they, they'll say like, okay, this is uh you know a, a democracy. But that is not true. I would say Israel proper is an apartheid state. The occupied uh-huh. lands of West right. Bank it's just and, soft, and Gaza it's a are, are prisons. Of, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a soft, softer por- form of, let's say, uh, of an of an apartheid state. Um, yeah, they they Are try they... to get away with it, saying, okay, well, we can't really talk about those people on the West Bank or in Gaza, you know, because we're we're just, you know, there's this peace process going on. We're trying to find a solution for them, but I mean, that's become, you know, that that argument has has grown weaker and weaker, and you know, it's increase, increasingly um, um, not tenable. I mean, it's because look, there, there's obviously no intention, and now, and now actually the mask is off, and people like Netanyahu say, "Oh, they're never, we're never going to give them a state." There used to be a pretense, you know, we will give them a state one day, and that was kind of, that was useful for Israel. It was just something that it was always a, um, something that they could resort to in an argument and say, "Okay, yeah, no, we understand. It's not great for them, but we're trying to work something out." But now. You know, they're not even trying to work anything out. This this apartheid is permanent. You know, the only alternative that actually is being voiced openly within Israel is plain old ethnic cleansing or genocide. You know, kill them all or just drive them off into the desert. Yeah, then we'll have our Jewish state. That'll be the end of an apartheid state because we'll be all of us will be Jews. <laughs> I mean, right. that's, that's really where well, it's our, gone to now. Hmm. But yeah, no, you're right. Our, I mean, our, just within 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 Israel, there is not, you know, c- certainly the uh, kind of a, a, you know, the way that uh, we understand democracy in the West, an essential part of it is that all citizens, you know, have equal rights, and that clearly is not true even within is you know within Israel proper. Right. That, that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit. Are you able to explain a little bit how the apartheid system works within Israel proper itself? Or is that a little bit too yeah, no, I legal think actually, in the weeds? Yeah, I don't know all the legalities of it. You know, again, I know there are, there are restrictions on, you know, land. You know, again, you mentioned the IDF. The Arabs are not able to serve in the IDF. And then I guess what I'll say, too, is that um, there in general is just – there's always been a fear. There's understanding that they're not really wanted, that they're merely tolerated, and they're not, you know, they're kind of considered by many, well, not many, probably, you know, the vast majority of uh, Jewish Israelis as, as a problem, you know, as an affront to the Jewish state, because this is a Jewish state, and um, it, that that's what they're told. And so, you know, they're they detract from that, you know, and so they're always understood that, you know, they're not truly even welcome here in their own land. Um, and that has, that hostility towards the Arab citizens of Israel has increased markedly since October 7th. And I, you know, I've just, I uh, was recently reading some um, interviews done with Arabs there and they say, you know, that, yeah, they're just plain terrified. They're very careful about what they say or do, and and they're just trying to s- stay home and keep away from crowds and whatever. They're you know they're afraid that that any time violence could break out against them. Yeah, I saw some some poll that said something like eighty seven or eighty eight percent of of Israelis do will not let their children play with Arab children. You know, something like that. Just kind of an example of showing the, yeah. you no, know, the, 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 this right. inherent racism within right. uh, the society. Right. Um, and the idea that it's democracy. I think there's something even in just in, in the charter, in, in the signed in the law about um, that rights are reserved for the Jewish people. That basically right. all. So, and, and that's been renewed, I think, every year since it was introduced in since like 2017 or something like this. Um Okay, right. well, if you don't, we, we don't have to dive yeah. too deep uh, into the specifics of it. Um, 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 well, is there anything else we want to cover with uh, between Israel and Gaza, the situation, before we maybe um, pivot to something else? Yeah, I guess maybe I just want to, I mentioned that, you know, again, the three Hamas leaders were named in the indictment. And mm. one of them, in fact, is a lead negotiator. So that's, I find that very odd, you know. 
that's just going to make a ceasefire all the more difficult. And, you know, don't forget it was the previous lead negotiator for Hamas was assassinated by the Israelis. You know, again, of course, the Israelis are looking, if the Israelis, Israelis were looking for peace for any kind of diplomatic solution, they would not be assassinating, um, you know, lead negotiators. But that's actually a longstanding policy. I mean, um, that, that's that been going on for a long time. But it's just odd that, that I, I think that, um, that um, the prosecutor, the ICC prosecutor went along with that. I, I kind of, it kind of looks like he just took what the Israelis um, gave to him on, on um, Hamas, what they wanted. And, you know, he repeated the rape charges, which mm -hmm. are absurd and do not have any basis in fact. And in fact, he didn't even prevent any, you know, evidence for them. So he kind of, he, he repeated some of the more lurid, let's say, embellishments that um, of the October seventh seventh attack that the Israelis had been um, propagating. Um, I, I think, you know, again, he knew that he was going to draw a lot of fire for this for actually naming, you know, Netanyahu and Gallant, and it was just a way of covering him, you know. And say, okay, well, we named three people in Hamas. You know, if, if he had just focused on them, um, it, you know, he might, he may have even been told that if you don't name you know, Hamas leaders, you know, we're not going to support you from, from some people or, or some governments that were on the fence. And, and that's, mm. that's why he did it. It's, again, it's, it's politics. Yeah. I, again, I you, do. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just say yeah. The you know Israel's working twenty four seven to really portray Hamas as just the just as complete monsters, and right. um, they're you know I, I don't know if you've noticed recently. There's just kind of been a new kind of uh, wave, social media wave that's being pushed by uh, you know the Israeli lobby and, and Israel and Zionists around the world. Um, about all these rape charges, uh, you know, all these rapes that Hamas has mm. committed and these videos. And I think the New York Post had a, a pretty disgusting title saying that, you know, you, you're listening to you, a picture of um, of some hostages that are bloodied and saying that, you know, that they were discussing how they will rape these uh, hostages, uh, you know, before um, they have. So uh, this has been going around a lot the past three or four days on, on Twitter, on X. Um, are you able to speak to the validity of any of these videos or these claims? Um, yeah. uh, it seems well, like they just I'll, popped up a, yeah, a couple right. of days ago. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll have to, um, I'll have to thank. I guess I should say, you know, Max <laughs> Blumenthal, you know, for addressing this. Uh, um, but yeah, they came up with it was a video that had been around, I think, before, and it, it was released. It just showed basically what it showed was. Um, IDF, not IDF, okay, well, we'll get to that. It, it showed Hamas soldiers um, um, capturing some IDF soldiers, female IDF soldiers, who were there right at, you know, the Gaza border. They were at one of these um, military installations. So it was on October 7th, it was this, this military outpost was overrun. And actually, the, the job of these female, you know, IDF soldiers was to um, keep watch, basically, you know, to to observe uh, goings on in in um, in Gaza and to report anything unusual. Now, clearly, you know, apparently they failed, you know, in their task here, and they were they were captured, you know, along with other IDF soldiers. And well, it, it, the way Max Blumenthal puts it, it's just that the IDF, the male IDF soldiers, just you know, jumped out the windows and ran away and left the females there, which you know, may in fact be true. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, by, you know, from, you know, my uh, respect for the IDF, which was never very high, has is, is dropped considerably since October 7th. Um, but there is nothing that they said, you know, that had any, you know, even um, connotation of threats of sexual violence. It was just... It was simply that they were being captured and taken as hostages, and that's that. And there was just nothing else. And in fact, he said there was one. Okay, there's one thing. Okay, one of the uh, women had like a a, a a bloody spot on her, like the back of her pants. And this was that had appeared in a photograph that had been published earlier. And they say, well, this is proof that she was sexually violated. You know, there's blood leaked out and. 
Um, but actually in this video, you can see her being arrested and you can see that there's blood on her hands and that, you know, she touches her pants. And so there's, you know, this thing, there was always a stretch, but there's actually now definitive proof that this had nothing to do with a sexual violation. There simply is no, no proof, no evidence of it. Um, it's just been a, it's the sort of thing, you know, that the IDF came up with some days or weeks after October 7th. Um, and well, not necessarily the IDF, but the Israeli government. And, you know, there, you know, there's a, um, it's just a way to, um, it's, it's, it's typical, you know, of, of all kinds of wars, you know, atrocity stories to get the, get your people to hate the other side. Uh, you know, in the First World War, we had stories of the Germans bayoneting babies and so forth, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, World War II has its share of atrocity stories. Uh, maybe we'll get into that more later. But um, um, yeah, this this recent video is something, you know, they actually, you know, they show these. They, I guess in the, the video, they they describe them as girls. And they don't mention that, no, they're not girls. They're IDF soldiers, you know, at a military installation close to Gaza. So there is actually nothing. The fact that they're being detained is actually not a war crime even. It's nothing. There's no atrocity being displayed there. Everything, you know, that that was being done there is completely um, <laughs> compliant with the rules of war. And it's just certain things are were interpreted or, or deliberately mistranslated. Um, to support the, you know, the, the mass rape narrative. Okay. Um, do, what are the charges that the ICC is bringing against these Hamas leaders exactly? Well, one you know? of them is mass these, rape. These, it is the right. rape, right? That's yeah, what I'm that's saying. One of so them, the, but that's not the only one. Um, and then, um, and the, you know, simply attacks on, on civilians. And there, mm -hmm. there may be some truth to that. You know, again, I, I know earlier you're asking about you know, how, what was the kind of the proportion of IDF casualties to civilian casualties? Now, you know, originally it was said that there were 1,400 people killed, and then that was dropped to 1,000, revised down to 1,200. And now the, I think the most recent figure is like one th closer to 1,100. Um, and if you look at that 1,100, about 700 were civilians and about 400 were IDF. Um, mm. And now the question is, you know, how many of these civilians were killed um, in friendly fire? You know, because we know that there are, um, or, you know, as a result of the, the Hannibal Directive, you know, this policy of Israel's not to allow the, the enemy to take any hostages, to kill the captors along with the hostages. And then just the um, the carnage that was wreaked outside of that um, that concert, music outdoor festival. concert, right, the music festival. Um, you, you can see the pictures of it. I mean, there's just, there's a, you know, long row of cars that are blackened and just, you know, clearly have been, um, um, you know, absolutely destroyed. And what the, what a lot of critics of the, uh, or skeptics, let's say, of the, uh, the Israeli claims, Israeli government claims say is that, you know, these clearly were not. Uh, okay, these cars were not destroyed by by Hamas soldiers. They just had small arms. You know, these are clearly cars that have been hit by missiles. You know, and that's that's what a, a number of witnesses said that it was just it was the IDF f uh, firing at every car. You know, indiscriminately. You know, with missiles, and they they had no idea who were in these cars. And maybe some of those cars did have Hamas soldiers in them, but it seems that the majority of them had the uh, fest music festival participants and other people that were just trying to flee the area. So again, I don't know if we'll ever know what the figures are exactly, how many of those 700 civilian casualties were, were killed by the IDF and how many were killed um, by Hamas. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I think you're right. Probably won't ever know, so it's probably not good to argue if the IDF killed more civilians yeah, than I think it's Hamas, just fair to but... say that actually that 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 figure, the one thousand okay, one hundred. Well, first of all, four hundred of them were IDF, and again, by the laws of war, an occupied people has a right to resist the occupiers. So mm -hmm. those are not war crimes. You know, we can talk about the seven hundred, but we don't know how many of those are. Maybe you know. Who knows? Half, who maybe knows? half. Right. right, right, right. But in any case, it's just a 
very small fraction of the civilians that have been killed since. Yeah, so I, the, the reason I was asking what what were the charges being brought up against them is I know that Khan, you know, brought this rape charge, which doesn't seem to be founded on anything, just people, just, just the Israelis taking their word at face value. So I was wondering right. if, if if these, you know, the, like the lead negotiator goes to Qatar or wherever for a negotiation and gets arrested because there's a warrant out for him, then, then there's a trial, right? Right. If there's a trial, is it possible that people will be like, hey, when actually they well, have to dissect it and right. die to the wounds? Like, there's nothing here. This, right. These claims are, the rape claim doesn't seem to have any evidence or behind it. The, you know, killing of civilians is something that, it, it seems like that's something that they can right. maybe get some people on. Because it's clear that Hamas did kill some civilians. Right. But it's it's very clear that the IDF also killed their own right. civilians there. Yeah. And, and and this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is something that Haaretz has said. Yeah. You know, right. This is something that's There's been There's no reported. question that a certain number, we just don't know how great the number was. Right. A, a certain number, you know, <clears throat> a not insignificant number, dozens at least, pro almost certainly hundreds were killed by the IDF. Um, and, and I, yeah, I mean, even within Israel, there, there is an awareness of that. Right, right. That's what um, I say. Even the Israelis right. know that right. uh, you, because, it, so it, it seems like the Americans don't know <laughs> the, the, yeah. the rest well, of the that's world. Actually, that's something that's long been true. I mean, I, I've been following this since like the 1980s off and on. And uh, it's always, it's long been true that you actually get more dissent even within Israel than you do in the U.S. It's just like the in the U.S. It's you get very little of you know the um, coverage of the dark side of let's say Israel's policies. In Israel, you know it's it's obviously very strongly tilted you know towards the the the, the government policy and supportive in general of you know the, of the IDF. But you still get more dissent there than you get in the U.S., and which is mm. pretty pathetic. It's crazy. You know? It's crazy. Right. I feel yeah. like our government is more pro-Israel than they are pro-American. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. I, actually, I think that's fair to say. I think that's clear yeah. now. Right. That, right. Uh, no, no, it's true. And I just recently, I don't know if you heard about it, but there was um, one congressman uh, proposed. Hey, Doge. <laughs> had recently proposed actually extending like special benefits to um, people. American service, American citizens who serve in the IDF. So who maybe yes. have never served in the American Armed Forces. They're, um, you know, but extending the benefits that um, uh, U.S. service members get to IDF service members. Do, do you know how many Americans? Or this is the thing that I think a lot of people need to understand about Israel is that a very large percentage of Israelis have dual citizenship, which just goes to show you they're not really, because they're not from Israel. You know, they all, they have this, this whole uh, uh, birthright policy where right. they use U.S. and German taxpayer money to fly people out from around the world to come to Israel. And then they set them, say, go settle this land, go kill some Palestinians and take their land, basically. And we fund that. Um, yeah. and, and they get to keep their German citizenship and they get to keep yeah. their U.S. citizenship. So do, do, how many... Americans, uh, dual citizens, uh, U.S. Israeli citizens live in Israel. Yeah. Do you have any idea? I don't know what the numbers are. Um, it's got to be I pretty high, right? Yeah, I think it's what it's it's like at least a, like twenty percent or something of US, Israeli citizens have dual citizenship, and maybe mm -hmm. higher than that. You know, that's something to look into. Um, and then the thing is, like within the U.S., we have a lot of you know high-ranking. Um, um, government officials that are dual citizens, and this is a real problem. But you're mm. not allowed to point out that that's a problem that makes you an anti-Semite, right? <laughs> you know, according right. to the, that, the, the definition that's been adopted by the U.S. government. Um, but it is clearly a problem. You know, it was a problem. It was one of the reasons that we, that we had the Iraq War. Um, Wolfowitz, I think, was a, is a, a dual citizen dual citizen and he was instrumental in bringing about you know our participation our well and bringing about the iraq war the u.s invasion of iraq um you know right. we saw it as something is good for israel well we have that uh, brian mass right this uh, representative right um and he wore where's his yeah, idf yeah. No, uniform I actually seen that on... video, walking down the halls of congress in an idf right. uniform that's just that's obscene. You know, it should yeah, be. Well, you know, if you're an America first guy, you say, get the hell out of here. You know, what are you doing? Right. Right. But, uh, uh, yeah, just imagine but it shows any, the whole imagine any other funny. country. 
Right. right. Imagine any other wearing the uniform of any other army, you know, like mm-hmm. if you were walking down the, the street, even if you're wearing something like the pretty something pretty innocuous, like the, uh, you know, a German military outfit or a British military outfit. That's absurd. It's like, right. why is this person in our country? Right. You know, yeah. serving in, in, in our, our politics, you know, that's right. that's a particularly absurd. Right. The, so, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious to see, like, I wish, you know, if these arrest warrants go out. You know, and if they ever get brought to court, which, you know, probably may never happen, they'll stay holed right. up wherever they can be safe. Um, but if they do, it'll be interesting to see because then you'll you'll get to see, you know, the, the case for Netanyahu and Golan, which the evidence is overwhelming just from right. the, from their own mouths of invoking, making these very genocidal right. statements. You know, invoking Amalek, saying you have to kill the babes, you have to kill the mothers, you know, this right. type of thing coming from their own mouths and and just the actions, you know, what we can see. And then we have the, the charges against Hamas and right. Right. they we seem have to be pretty shaky. Evidence. I mean, it's just actually a lot of these videos that the IDF soldiers themselves have been, you know, taking, you know, all their... Uh, the disgusting right. selfies that they take. I mean, if you just limited it to things that IDF soldiers themselves have pu- published, I think you would have overwhelming evidence. Right. That's the scary thing. I mean, it's not they they're proud of it. I mean, that they they revel in it. And um yeah, that's that's the horrible state of affairs that you know that we're observing in Israel. This is what Israel's become. It's not just that okay, they're you know, for example, there were, there were some terrible war crimes committed in Vietnam, quite a few. You know, I'm sure the most famous, of course, was the the, the My Lai massacre, but that was something that that Americans considered shameful. You know, a lot of Americans denied they could happen; they couldn't believe it could happen. Um, I don't know about did. this. Event. Okay, well, it was a it was a case of some. Um, American soldiers just actually rampaging through a small Viet- Vietnamese village, killing all all the residents, women, children, you know, old men, everyone that they found. I um, mean, it was it was just taken as reven- revenge. You know, it was the sort of thing that happened in Vietnam because you had these, you know, you sent these young men out there into the into the jungles or out into the rice paddies, and um, you know they'd often be ambushed. Their buddies would be killed. And they would sense, you know, probably with the reason that the local people were against them and were supporting the, um, you know, the guerrillas and the NVA that they were fighting. So uh, sometimes they just took it out on the villagers. You know, you, you, you know, OK, I can't find the guy, you know, the Viet Cong guerrilla that actually killed my buddy, but I'm going to kill all those people who supported him. You know, they didn't. You know, they had no idea whether or not they really did. They just guessed that they did. You know, they just lashed out. But it was something that was considered shameful. Um, it was not something that, you know, that they themselves knew that they could get in trouble for it. You know, that people back home would condemn. You know, they, they had at least had awareness. You know, what they did was awful and completely unjustified. There's no no excuse. It was mass murder, you know, and they should have been punished accordingly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but what you find in Israel is just that they're so open about what they're doing. And, and yeah, they're everybody, you know, from, you know, from, yeah, the, the, the lowliest the foot soldier to the president of the country is talking openly about just killing babies. Well, and, well not, not even just within the military, just within the society, within, mm-hmm. you know, the, the children, the mothers, you know, the, right. the, the women and, and old, old men and, uh, uh, in Israel, has there ever been anything comparable this to this type of, uh, you know, the, this sickness essentially within a, a society carrying out a genocide? Because when you talk about like, you know, Germany and the Holocaust, right, awful. But it was a few people, and it was hidden mostly from the public. The German right. people weren't complicit in it; they right. weren't supporting it and cheering yeah. it. Right. Here, you could say, you know, maybe like. Well, the same thing in the U.S. You could say maybe kind of passively they should have known, they should have made an extra effort to understand or whatever. But that's just the way most people go along their lives and trust their government. And that was true mm-hmm. in Germany. It's true in the U.S. Uh, you're right. They didn't see it. You know, whatever took place in the camps, um, you know, they weren't there. They didn't see it. And um, but but the Israelis, I mean, they they know. 
you know, maybe they, from what I understand, is they kind of like Israeli TV is scrubbed of like, you know, of dead images of dead babies and that kind of thing. But people, you know, all the young people have access to the social media. And then you just look at what what the, um, they know the accusations that are being made against them. And you find, how is the public reacting? They're, um, they're just, most of them, the majority of Israeli Jews are, want their government to go in harder and, you know, and mm, kill more. Right. I mean, you, you, you know, I, you see a lot of these leaked telegram channels where there are a bunch of Israeli citizens, you know, these aren't soldiers and they, they, they share photos of things like, you know, children that are blown apart, um, you know, massacred uh, right. Palestinians. And they are, they all laugh at it and, and they're yeah. making jokes right. about it, say how we got to get them all, you know, it, it's very, it's, it's yeah. really crazy that. Yeah. Well, it's that, something that, you know, like, again, if you were following Israel over the years there, that streak, that sadistic streak was always apparent. Um, you know, for example, in the, the, the Gaza war back in, um, you know, I think in 2006, uh, I believe it was the, or it may have been, may have been later, but you know, one of the re it was Operation Cast Lead uh, that that came a little bit later, or did it? No, it was around that time. Anyway, you know, give or no, take. No, no. Yeah. Um, um, anyway, I remember stories about how Israelis were kind of were were camp had had drove to like the hills overlooking Gaza, and you know, with lawn chairs and and sitting out there drinking beers and eating popcorn and, and laughing as they, you know, they saw uh, residential buildings get blown up, you know, right. for them, it was just a, it was just a show and it was, it really is sadistic. It doesn't get the, it never get got the coverage in the mainstream media here, but for, you know, people who were willing to, to look, it was always there. It was always apparent that there was this very sadistic streak within, within Israel. Yeah, so, so I, I don't I don't think there has really been anything comparable to the Israeli society in the way that Israel is conducting its genocide. Because usually genocide is something that is done a bit more discreetly, you right. know. Yeah, at least I mean, the, like all kinds of countries have terrible blood on their hands. Um, but yeah, it's always sort of been done at arm's length, and the people who carried it out generally tried to, you know, lied to the folks back home about it, you know. Or the governments might have been aware of it, complicit in it, but it was something that they uh, they didn't actually celebrate. You know, well, was Israel always this sick of a society? I mean, I know it was the the founding of it was always you know was was horrific, and that's a big problem. You know, just right. the, just how they with the Nakba expelling almost seven hundred thousand to a million Palestinians, multiple massacres, driving them all from their lands. Um, and I guess because you founded your nation that way, maybe they just had to justify it saying like, you know, we are the chosen people. This is our right. You know, these people have to go or they have to die. That's basically the mindset, I feel, of uh, of 90 percent of Israelis. Is that fair yeah. to say? I think it is fair to say. I mean, that's what, um, you know, what the polls show is I think it's yeah, certainly easily 90 percent of Israelis think that the government's what, what what the government doing is, is doing now in Gaza is right or is not enough you know that's yeah, it, um it's just i i feel like there's no solution for this because you know right, I, I try, you i'm trying to think of yeah i'm trying to think of some other genocide that could have be comparable and i was thinking maybe rwanda but this was kind of like uh a, a, a sort of a bloodlust that just sort of overtook the Hutu, is it the Houthi, Houthi, Houthis or the yeah. Tutsis? I forget which one was which, but the, the bloodlust that just sort of t overtook them. Uh, and it wasn't something that was kind of ingrained in society for a long time. And they were just teaching like, okay, we got it. You know, the, you know, it, it's, it's still different. I, I, I just don't think there's anything comparable. Is there? I mean, can can <laughs> yeah. you make, draw a comparison to something like what, what happened in Rwanda? I mean, it's, no, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I mean, um, why? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? What, what's what are the differences that you well, would see? Well, okay, you know, actually, I, I know there is actually sort of an alternative. In general, the, you know, it's considered. I think it's true s still. I mean, I, I've I've heard a kind of a revisionist view of what the the massacre that puts much more of the blame on the Tutsis rather than on the on the Houthis, but the. Um, you know, the Houthis were actually, if anything, kind of like the um, the weaker party or the less prestigious, the people with less status. And I th and my understanding all 
of it always has been that it was, you know, sort of this rage, you know, they look down on us, you know, they think that they're better than us. Those, those Tutsis, they're taller than us. And, you know, they, 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 they think they're the aristocrats and they were always going to be the serfs in their eyes. They're lighter and, skinned yeah, as well. They look a little different. Right. And so, um, so it's sort of maybe it's, you know, they weren't slaves, but that's something that you see, for example, you know, in a, uh, a group that feels somewhat oppressed or, you know, or in, in some way um, despised, well, you know, some can sometimes, you know, uh, react in violently, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just didn't. Uh, and that, that's, you know, that's my understanding of that, which is very different from what we have here. I mean, these are, you know, clearly the Israelis are the more powerful party. You know, they're actually generally the more educated, the wealthier. They've had, they've been in the Catsbird seat for a long time. They've had control really over the situation. It's not that they, you know, they feel like they're despised, but, you know, rather it is, um, I, it seems to be very much in a, flex, in a, a reflection of some kind of, um, Jewish supremacy, you know, just this sense that we, you know, their lives are worth less than ours. And I think that actually, you know, like a lot of these recent statements are quite open about it coming from, you know, not just government leaders, but, you know, rabbis, leading rabbis and so forth. So mm -hmm. there is something else going on here. Is there, do you think there's any way to save the Israeli society or is the only way, is it for it to kind of dissolve I mean, it sounds yeah. like well, it's just I, the, it's yeah, so sick to its core right. that I don't see. You, you yeah, know, well, you Biden don't had see. that. Right. Well, I, I was just going to say, yeah, Biden didn't have that saying. It's like, oh, I'm going to have a talk with Netanyahu and give, have a come to Jesus talk with them. Right. You know, yeah. is it possible for the Israelis to have a come to Jesus moment? I mean, that, I know that's a yeah. bad <laughs> phrase yeah. to use, but it's what right. Biden used. So. Right. Yeah. Um, um, I just don't see it, you know, anything short of some sort of total catastrophe that hopefully, you know, comes short of a, a nuclear catastrophe. Um, you know, that's the, you know, there does seem to be very much a sense that, okay, you know, um, yeah, we are the eternal victims. All criticisms of us, you know, are, are motivated by pure, you know, anti-Semitic malevolence. Uh, you know, these like these recent court decisions, you know, from the ICJ and the ICC, they simply sh prove this. They show that it's the whole world is against us. Well, you know, to hell with them. We're going to just have to do what we got to do. That seems to be the attitude, right? I mean, it just throughout, you know, there. It's not just that Netanyahu is in charge and we get somebody else in charge, things will get better. Or if it's, you know, uh, the, the, the secular versus the, you know, the, the religious nationalists, it's really the entire society. And I, yeah, I mean, it's, it seems to be, it's, it's like an apocalyptic cult has taken over the, the country. Um, and they are on a course, you know, they've, they've gone down these last several months since October 7th, they've, you know, they've followed this course, which seems to be leading towards just a general, you know, you just, when you look down there and you'd look for some sort of light at the end of the tunnel, you don't see it. You just see an abyss. It's whatever is, it's however it's going to end. It's going to be really bad and not just bad for the Gazans, but for the Israelis too, you know, but they just don't seem to, to have any awareness on us. Maybe, maybe even they understand that could happen, but they just say to hell with it. If, you know, like if we don't get what we is coming to us the whole world is going to suffer that's that's the samson option right yeah that's the, that's the philosophy behind it that's, that's what makes again this whole thing so very terrifying uh, I, I you know i wonder you know it's just be so interesting to think about if, if you were born into that society it's really society and you had your your mind and your worldview shaped by this society this this sort of apocalyptic genocidal racist society you know it, 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 like you said, it's like a cult. Surely, but in every cult, there are always people that break away from the cult. There has to be a, some Israelis that are shedding light on just how yeah. horribly well, yeah, racist. Right. I know there right. are, but I guess they're suppressed. Right. But right. Um, well, there there certainly are. You know, like Elon Pape. You know, the historian. You know, these are older Israelis. Unfortunately, I think you find most of them among the older generation. So you're saying that, you know, has Israel always been like this? I think in general, the answer is yes, but there was more dissent in the past. You know, there was 
some kind of peace movement. You know, there was, um, it, you know, it wasn't unheard of. There were there were parties that that at least um, uh, kind of gave an airing to some of the some truly dissenting views on the, the Zionist project. Um, but all in all, you know, the, the problem is that you know even the people who maybe against their better judgment, you know, who maybe had mixed feelings about it, they all committed themselves to the Zionist project. And the Zionist project at its core, you know, whether it's religious Zionism or it's secular Zionism, and it's important to remember, it started off as purely secular. It's just the, the religious nationalists joined at a later date. It's, you know, a, a fundamentally, you know, it's a, a supremacist kind of project. It is that you know we you know we have these rights that other people we've kind of given ourselves that other people don't have and if other people don't recognize it you know they're wicked <laughs> i mean that's right. what it, it's it, if no other country in the world thinks like this it's and, and it's so funny that we talk about them being this democracy and that we have to they're you know the strongest ally and we got to support them yeah, and, yeah. And, and and in this type of age you know we're uh, you know the ideas of racism are so abhorrent right. to all of Western society. We all grow right. up, and the, just the the concept is so strange. And then you had this poisonous monster growing in Israel the whole time, yeah, and we right. nobody addressed it, nobody recognized yeah, it. Well, yes, and of course, some people did, but they were always right. silenced and they were marginalized. I mean, the all media along, never there covered, been, right? Right. You know, there have been occasionally been congressmen. You know. Um, who, you know, who have spoken against Zionist, Zionism. And then, you know, I, I think I mentioned it was back then, uh, Richard Nixon and um, Billy Graham, their conversation, they understood it was a problem mm -hmm. you know, way back then in the, the early 1970s. It was, it was easier, you know, to, uh, yeah, but even then they felt like, you know, they said, oh, but I can't, this is what Nixon said. He was president of the United States. Oh, I completely agree. You know, like if, if we, we don't, uh, you know, put an end to the stranglehold that the Jewish Zionists have on this country. This country is in big, big trouble. Um, um, but he was he, he, president of the United States. He understood this, but he felt like he couldn't talk about it. And that was in the 1970s. Since, since then, things have only gotten worse. Now, yeah. finally, it looks like maybe they're starting to get. Well, they're getting both worse and better now. I mean, there's increasing polarization. There are more people because of the horror of, you know, this, this Gaza uh, genocide. There are more people that have woken up to the fact. But the supporters of Israel have just become increasingly authoritarian and extreme and, you know, doing what they can to crack down on it. And that's what we're, you know, we're seeing in this country now. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I want to end with that question, like, so, so what happens? Because it sounds like you can't destroy Zionism. This is a country that is yeah. completely brainwashed in the cult. It's a Zionist en entity. That's that's what they chose to be. Right. I think so they made a, you... they essentially, they made it a bargain with the devil back then. You know, there's some people, I think well, probably a fair number of them kind of wish that, Okay, then we'll become a normal European country. Okay, yeah, the Nakba, that was kind of ugly. You know, we drove 700,000 Palestinians off the land. Okay, but okay, it's done. You know, like the the Americans did it to the Indians or whatever, and now we're going to be a normal. But it's just, it, it, it seems like they never ceased being a Zionist country. That's really what they're all about. You know, it wasn't just an unfortunate accident it's just that the zionism zionism didn't just it wasn't a stage in their development it's just how they define themselves and yeah like you see there's without zionism there's really no israel they're they're mm. inseparable yeah well it's it sounds like there's no way to stop the zionist machine until you know they're met with force and and that's going to be bad it's going to be bad it's going to be really scary yeah for, it's going to be bad for the world nukes are going to fly i just like we keep on saying that there just doesn't seem to be an off-ramp and it's just terrifying because you can't negotiate with with the zionists they've made it very clear that they will not give the palestinians a state um they do right. not seem to care about you know using starvation and uh, as, a, as a tool of a weapon of war they don't seem to care about that they, they explicitly seem to want to commit genocide it's just it's just going to keep. I just feel like it's just going to keep on going until eventually Hezbollah, Iran, is going to do something, and then it's going to be 
all hell breaks loose. You know, we yeah. came very close to this already. Right. Um, and it's just not, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's simmered down, but it hasn't stopped at all. It's just building back up. And right. Yeah, is that what you, you believe as well? That we're just going to wait until it's just going to come to some big war? Because it seems like the only thing that will stop Israel is the it will be military force. It will be some type of, uh, you know, other country intervening. I mean, the United States, if we pull out aid, I don't think that would stop Israel. Israel's yeah, kind of I, sad that I they're going to do what any, we're going to do. Any indication that that's going to happen. Well, the only possibility, I mean, I don't think it's real. But um, I don't know if you saw, there was recently a story, um, I think it was Project Veritas that, um, you know, interviewed or, or managed to videotape some sort of high-level um, security advisor in the Biden administration. And they say, okay, yeah, we can't mm. do anything about Israel right now because of the huge Jewish influence. Those are the exact words that he used. But when you know, after November, if Biden is reelected, then there may be changes. So mm -hmm. That's a possibility. I just don't see Biden doing it. But, you know, if he does something, it'll be a halfway measure. And in the end, it won't make any difference that Netanyahu will call his bluff. I just don't see anything in either anybody in either political party actually going against the Israelis now. There's just no indication of that happening. Um, so, do yeah, I Israel, just don't see it. Do you think Israel looks this as a state five years? Well, you know, if you ask if you're me a that man. before October 7th, I would say, of course, you know, it looks like they're going to be there for the next, well, maybe at least for the next 25 years or something. You know, it's just they've got a handle on the situation. They're just, um, you know, they don't have any real military rivals. Um, you know, nobody cares about the Palestinians, you know, they've, I think that's the way a lot of us looked at it. Um, but now it's, yeah, it's an open question. I mean, it's just that they're kind of like careening down a war, uh, down a road towards a cliff and, you know, maybe just maybe somebody will put up a roadblock and stop them before they go off the cliff or maybe, you know, I don't, I, I don't see how it could happen, but they could actually hit the brakes themselves. You know, maybe at the last second, they're just the fear of when they realize the abyss is right before them, they might just stop. That's not impossible, but I, you know, it just, it just seems like, again, you know, it's just, uh, uh, the odds are they're going to go off that cliff. I don't know what that means exactly. You know, when I say that, it just, but, but uh, yeah, Israel will no longer, yeah, Israel may not exist in five years. I, I don't know. I would. I don't think like it a, will. Yeah. I, I, I would Even, put, say less than five years. You know, that's yeah. kind of my, you know, in a couple of years, who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's but, already yeah, changed Israel so doesn't exist then the, the world is going to be fundamentally changed because Israel is like, again, joined at the hip with the U.S. It's kind of mm -hmm. been a tumor um, on it the would body be so... of the U.S. It'll be, the... it's going to be just a, it's going to be some sort of cataclysm, some sort of, you know, like a volcanic uh, eruption in geopolitical terms. And, then, right. you know, I don't even see what's on the other side of it. Now, I mean, it's like so, a tumor getting removed from the right, U.S. Exactly. is the way I look at it. It's yeah. like it's a huge operation, but the world is going to. I just thinking about a world without Israel is just so much better. There's yeah. no, we just saved so much money, saved so many lives. And I'm not right. saying anything about exterminating the Jews by saying yeah, that right. I want to, right. don't want to, the state yeah. of Israel. I want, I have nothing against Jews. You know, I, I want Jews to live in peace and they can live in peace in basically any country in the world. The only reason that maybe right. they have difficulties in some countries is because of what they're doing currently right. I, 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 under their flag, yeah. Israeli yeah. flag. No, no, no. I, don't, you know. I do not want to see like a reverse genocide. I do not. Did nobody right. Me too. My I don't that, want the Israelis yeah, to be I, wiped out. I, right. I can and understand I how the Palestinians like, want yeah. it. But, sorry. I'm yeah. sure there are, you know, this, this country, when I say the country, you know, as a whole, is like kind of under, like in the clutches of some sort of evil cult. You know, I mean that. But I don't mean that every individual there or whatever, you know, it's just like people are put in the ordinary people are put in those kind of places and they get brainwashed and whatever you but right. just want it for their good too. that's let the cult end and let them be normal people again. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I, I understand that too. You know, like, you know, I know I've been to Tel Aviv, you know, I, I've, you know, you, 
you I'm just thinking if I was born in this yeah, society no, it's kinda, what, I right. might be that crazy maniac right. too and I right. might be like yeah, yeah you have to kill him because that's well, what I've been taught my is, whole right, life exactly it's just that because you now look at that younger generation like the number of the dissidents is just vanishingly small Mm. And so to say that, yeah, well, I know I wouldn't do that. You can't say that you wouldn't. You right. probably would yeah. be, you know, out there taking selfies and in Gaza, mm. you know. It's I, what you everybody's know, doing. Just, just thank God that I'm not there and I didn't grow up there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's something that I, I think about, too. I have to empathize and realize, like, look, these were when they were born, they were normal kids. They were normal, uh, normal babies. But then right. this this terrible sick society, this, the evils of Zionism has infiltrated that whole society so much that it's just, it has warped them all. And it doesn't let them, you know, look at Arabs as equals. It doesn't let them, you know, uh, be accepting or open. It's just, it's, it's poisonous. And if we can kill that idea, if we can kill the Zionist project, the idea the Jews might just, uh, the, the, you know, they, they might go back to just having the veil lifted from their eyes and be like, oh, my God, we can live in peace yeah. without having right. to do this. I can you have can my see, synagogue. Right. I can have my Jewish good traditions and customs. Right. And nobody will, anti-Semitism won't even be a thing anymore because you're not killing people and not, don't have these overtly racist and genocidal policies in place. Yeah. Um, anyways, I think okay. we should stop soon, yeah, Dad. It's we'll over stop. an hour. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I messed up. I, this was supposed to be the good news Friday and we just want all <laughs> genocide. So right. we messed up. Uh, okay. That next, that next <laughs> Friday we do, we try good news Friday. I forgot. So okay, we'll try. We'll probably we'll try. fail, okay. but we'll try. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks a lot, dad. Okay.